Hey everybody, uh, this morning big news is that uh, Stable Diffusion, which is uh, kind of a mid-journey, I call it a competitor, um, has been in closed beta and is now opening up. Uh, and you can access it not through their Discord, but actually on their website. Uh, so those, those of you that are not fans of Discord can now access that system directly. Uh, it's also working in Artbreeder if you're an Artbreeder person. I used to be an Artbreeder subscriber a long time ago, and it's a great tool. Uh, but because I'm a portrait photographer, I really didn't need uh, that tool so much for generating faces. We might cover that another day. Uh, but we're going to take a look at their Dream Studio so you kind of get an idea of what to expect. I'm going to share some resources as well so you can kind of get the best settings for the type of image you're going to work on. And we'll do a few demos to kind of see what we can get out of this thing. Again, don't expect the same result you would get in Midjourney. This tool doesn't have kind of the same grungy level feeling uh, and the level of detail isn't as grainy as it is in Midjourney. It has more of, uh, in some cases, a more photographic uh, look to it. And again, if it does do painterly or stylistic, it's again, a different feel than mid journey. Uh, so great. To, I think they're great tools, both of them together. Uh, I wouldn't use them as so much competitors, but um, they do offer competing imagery for the same style. Whatever that means. Let's take a look at it. The Dream Studio. So it's beta.dreamstudio.ai. I'll put a link down below if I spoke too fast for you. And basically, it's it's a pretty simple interface. Uh, up here, you've got all your options for memberships and so on. So I do want to point that out. This is a paid service. I did pay for it, although uh, you do get a bunch of credits, a bunch, some credits uh, to start out uh, to kind of test it when you create a new account. Uh, but I blew through those in a matter of minutes. So there you go. So for uh, 10 pounds, you get uh, apparently 961 standard generations. Uh, and we'll talk about what that means here in a moment. Um, and then over at the side here, be aware that there is an account settings um, and there is a safe mode down here that if you are a nipple freak and you're scared of boobs, then you want to check this because life might change and you will become easily offended. We don't want you easily offended. Uh, so be aware that that is there. We've turned that off because we are living on the edge. So uh, obviously the rest of this is pretty simple. You've got your dream down here, but you got all these things down the side here. Let's talk about them quickly. Height and width, uh, you should know what that means already. I will tell you this engine works best at smaller amounts. Um, I don't think that it's been tested very well at the higher end. So if you put this up to 1024 on one or both of those, uh, expect a lot of extra limbs and craziness to occur. Um, that seemed to be pretty consistent when I was testing it. Uh, anything beyond a normal, uh, say portrait type of something like this, 704 by 512. Um, well, portrait would be this direction, but you get the idea. This is fine, uh, and I would get uh, a pretty good result out of this. Number of images is obviously pretty simple. We'll probably just go for three here uh, for giggles. CFG scale and steps. Now, I have two spreadsheets I'll attach down below uh, that kind of show uh, in different like, grid here, the CFG versus the steps. I think steps is where you're going to start to really pay for this membership. So if you crank the steps up, you're making the uh, GPUs work harder, and I think that's going to be more expensive. So be aware that 50 steps of the default is probably pretty good across the board, unless you feel strongly you need to go with something. I wouldn't call it equivalent to quality, like in Midjourney, um, but I guess that's kind of the way to wrap your head around what it's doing. Uh, but 50 is fine. Uh, CFG scale, uh, again, you're going to get a different result. And down here, we have some really great examples of why, you, <laughs> why 7 and 50 is kind of the default. It's pretty safe. Uh, 7 uh, and 10 tend to be the two that I use the most. Uh, but you can see that you can kind of go up a bit further. And then uh, depending on what you're doing, like if you're doing a still life versus a portrait or a landscape, uh, you may find that these settings uh, may you know, benefit you from wandering away from the defaults. Uh, but again, the extremes tend not to be great, in my opinion, for what I like. Uh, you never know. You might be a real big fan of this. And you're like, well, dude, that's what are you saying? That's amazing. Well, there you go. Another one uh, that I'll throw down below is also showing the type of uh, sampler down here. So the samplers, we've got uh, LMS, uh, Euler, and Euler Ancestral are the three that I tend to live in. And But these other ones, especially when you get over here to DDIM and PLMS, uh, these go really weird, especially when you're really cranking the CFG scale. So um, I really don't want to spend money rolling dice, but that's kind of what this is in an extreme way. I mean, we're all kind of spending money to roll dice anyway, but this is, uh, this is a bit on the outside there. And you can kind of see here examples um, using Walter White, Nurture Moon, and the Bumblebee. You can see they're really on the edges here. Uh, kind of go off the deep end. 
So I've just kind of created this here uh, as a good example of a type of art that I like. We actually have Fragonard paintings here in Milwaukee. Uh, so I really like those in our public museum. Uh, so let's try a little Francois here, uh, Boucher. So let's hit Dream and see what we get. Again, double checking all of our settings to make sure before we commit to spending money here. And let's see what kind of thing we do. Again, faces are going to be a problem uh, almost always. And again, a different problem than mid-journey faces. They tend to look a little more cartoony. And sure enough, there we go. Uh, however, this does fit the style of these painters. So if you're wondering why it looks all weird, this actually is a pretty good example of a Fragonard type of um, painting. Uh, so I don't know that this is a fail uh, other than the face, which, uh, yeah, is a problem. And we can see here that um, she's a big fan of the movie The Thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, lots of extra fingers, lots of extra fingers. Can't go wrong with lots of extra fingers, can you? Uh, let's try a different example. Let's go with a Blade Runner cityscape. I'm going to change this from height and width here. Now I'm not making this pretty. You know, like I'm not going through and cherry picking results and showing you only the best ones. I feel it's best if you kind of see where the state of this engine is today. Uh, these are fantastic though. Yes, really, really love these. So again, we can click on one of these to get a full screen, which I really like instead of having to open a browser to get to it. Uh, that's pretty neat. I really enjoy the fact that I can get to this stuff quickly. If we look at some of the details on some of these other ones, uh, again, very different from mid-journey feeling, um, which is kind of what I like. I like something a little bit different than what we had before. Uh, so let's try it again with, uh, let's do three more. Let's do, um, let's do four because we're feeling good about this. Again, if we go back to our spreadsheets and we look at what we would expect for a more of a landscape type of thing, a CFG scale of seven, and then again, what we're looking for in our sampler, maybe we could try a different one um, if you're feeling frisky about it. And again, the same thing down here for our rainforest. If we look at our steps and our CFG number, is there something else that appeals to you? Um, I think that again, these are this is a pretty good default of seven and 50, which is what the default is for uh, pretty much every image I'm gonna create. It tends to be pretty safe. And there we go. Again, a pretty good rendition of what I would expect from uh, these keywords. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that overall. So there you go, a quick example of what we can expect from this tool. Uh, again, it's going to learn and adapt over time. As some of these things, even just two weeks ago, faces were really horrible in mid-journey. They look a lot better now. I would expect the same to happen in Stable Diffusion as they start to get their weighted model kind of trained uh, to understand what we feel is good or not good. Uh, mid-journey, I think, is being more aggressive toward training their models. We're giving, uh, we have ranking functions. Uh, to say we love it or hate it, actually use those things too. Uh, in fact, if you go in and you grade, you can actually earn free time in mid-journey uh, if you take the time to rate images. Uh, now, Stable Diffusion hasn't really gone through that. So uh, I think we're getting different art, uh, but I think we're getting more uh, egregious errors when it comes to things like faces and fingers. But I think the art style in some cases is a lot more pleasing overall here. Uh, but again, give or take, they're both good. Uh, they're both different and that's the goal. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, let me see some great art. Talk to you guys later.